Blackhawks fans, welcome to the newest edition of the Chicago Blackhawks Central Hockey Podcast. I am Joe Vitale, and that is Gokes. Today, uh, really, really low on the news. Um, not a lot of stuff going on, but we'll take you around the league a little bit, and then uh, we'll uh, give you some, uh, you know, we'll break down mm-hmm. the Tom Curver's Prospect Showcase that was this past weekend. Uh, I was preoccupied with Riot Fest. I was rioting with yeah. uh, many other sh- Chicagoans and uh, good times. I saw a bunch of Blackhawks gear there. So I saw hats. Oh, wow. I saw my jerseys, sweaters, and um, hoodies. You know, mm-hmm. uh, the Sunday was the coolest day, and you could definitely have used a light jacket. Nice. So, you know, the Friday was – it was a little hot in the sun, so you weren't going to really see many sweaters or – Yeah. Uh, or uh, hoodies or anything like that. But right. uh, Hawks are back. Some, yeah, saw some other yeah. uh, Blackhawks media members there. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, yeah, saw some of my favorite bands. So it was the best. Uh, awesome. So yeah, um, Jujar Kara, former Chicago Blackhawk, mm-hmm. uh, signs with the Minnesota Wild. One one year, seven seventy five. Mm-hmm. Uh, unconfirmed at the moment by Cap Friendly. So uh, you know, I, I heard Elliot talking about it on his Thirty Two Thoughts podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, he's like, oh yeah, I think there's something going on between Jujar Kara and Minnesota. So uh, good that Jujar is still playing pro puck. Uh, you know, that last, those last like nine games of the season, it was like Joey Anderson, Jujar Kara, and uh, maybe like Anders Bjork or right, Austin Bjork, Wagner, Wagner or something. right, right. You know, it was like that, or Joey Anderson, you know, it was, yeah, that, that like fourth, third, fourth line, it was like a fourth line that they were playing as a third line. They actually had some good jams, some good chemistry, and they, yeah. were, they were crashing and banging and scoring goals. So, you know, it, it was cool. Um, mm-hmm. And then, you know, with Jujar, I think he, he got into some injury troubles. So yeah. you really don't like to see that, you know, when it comes to players. You know, you got, you know, Taves ending his right. career because of uh, injuries. Mm-hmm. I know it's still unofficial, but, mm-hmm. uh, you know, Carl Haglin, yeah. you know, he, he, he had to retire because of injury. And, mm-hmm. you know, so it's just, I don't like to see players not going out on their own terms. And, yeah. And after that, um, Jacob Truba hit on uh, Kyra. Yeah. Wasn't last season, but was it the season year before? before? Right. Yeah. And he just didn't look the same. No. You know? No. I mean, man, that's really too bad to see. Uh, man, was he a hard player. Uh, just super, super hustler. You know, he, he reminded me of almost like a Ben Eager, right? A, a bigger right. Ben Eager, right? Yeah, and J- Jujar is a big guy. I mean, six three, big six boy. four, big and boy. and for uh, Dirty Truba to uh, you know take a shot at him like that, you know, uh, it's just unfortunate the way that that uh, wrote, wrote out there for uh, Jujar. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you're familiar with the Halo franchise, but they have a uh, they have mm-hmm. a. a a mode called SWAT where you can only yeah. um, hit people in the head. So I, mm-hmm. <laughs> I like to say, I like to say that Drake of Truba likes to play SWAT <laughs> yeah, um, in, in the NHL a lot, but uh, you know, he's uh, can be a little headhunter. I mean, he's a big guy, so yeah, uh, right. kind of hard to adjust, but mm-hmm. those elbows seem to get up a little high, but anyway, yeah. Um, so Jujar Kara, one year of the league men with the Minnesota Wild. Um, they're looking for they're looking in the bargain bin for sure. They're in cap hell. So yep, definitely. Uh, and then um, other than that, it's just been dominated by this uh, Columbus Blue Jackets situation with mm-hmm. Mike Babcock. Uh, so uh, you know. Uh, Spit and Chicklets, Paul Bissonette, he goes and gets a, he, you know, they're up, they're a players, uh, players forward, mm-hmm. pro player pod. And, um, they, uh, Biz got a, uh, a text from a player. He said, Hey, man, 
uh, Babcock's doing the picture thing again in Columbus. You know, mm-hmm. you can't get away with this. You got to put it on your pod. You got to slide it in there. Wow. You know, it's whatever. And so, you know, he was like, hey, you know, can you explain this to me? Uh, what this picture thing is, you know, I don't, I, I'm not, I don't understand what it is. I've never, he's never played, Biz has never played under Mike Babcock. Mm-hmm. This player had. So, you know, um, this is where, this is an instance where, uh, you know, it's been said to the media that uh, it's been portrayed as uh, Mike Babcock just asking for some pictures on your phone and, you know, seeing what you did over the summer and, you know, um, you know, just seeing uh, what, what it excites you and yeah. to try and connect with you on a personal level right. so that he could coach you better. But it, it, it kind of got, um, you know, with with business sources and whatnot, it got a little misconstrued as to exactly what was going on. And so, um, you know, Johnny Gaudreau came out and he said, yeah, you just, you know, Mike Babcock just asked me for some pictures on my phone. So I showed him, mm-hmm. you know, my wife, my dog, my daughter, you know, I, I love my family. And, you know, obviously he loves his family because he moved from Calgary to Columbus, Ohio. Right. Um, so yeah. it's like, rough. you know, right. Right. I think that is really rough to me. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> and, you know, and then um, Boone Jenner, of course, one right. seat Boone Jenner. Um, yeah. He, he's come out and saying like, yo guys, it's not like that. It's, it's, it's just like, he's asking us for some fix and yeah. you know, we, what we did over the summer, you know, I loved a wakeboard or whatever. Yeah. I don't know. And mm-hmm. um, so like the vet guys were, um, you know, they were okay with it, but then like some of the younger players were not really kosher with it. And then it started coming out that, uh, you know, Mike Babcock, he's, he's putting the pics on a projector or something wow. air dropping the photos to the projector. Mm-hmm. And there was like something about how he's, he's studying these pictures to see what kind of man you are. And it's wow. like, it's like, wait, wait, wait. Okay. You know, if you, if you want to know what I did and you, you don't want to, mm-hmm. you want to understand like, Oh yeah. Like in the summer, man, like I golf, I don't really have enough time. Uh, so I, I go, go across the country and I go to the, the United States best golf courses, you know? Okay, mm-hmm. cool. But like, what does that tell you about like, uh, what kind of person I am? You know, like, okay, like I'm, I'm a professional athlete. Uh, I got paid, you know, to play hockey, you mm-hmm. know, I'm really dedicated to my craft in the season. So like, you know, but you know, what if, you know, guys like, oh, you know, I, I like to go to concerts in the summer, you know? Yeah. I, I love to go, you know, I love country music and I love going to music festivals. Right. And you're like, okay, well, and you're, oh, well, now you're saying, you know, maybe Mike Babcock's thinking in his, in his brain, oh, well, this guy, he's, he's not putting the team first. He's putting right, his, right. you know, and it's, he's extrapolating from these pictures, things that might not be the case. But also he's a man in power. So mm-hmm. if you're a rookie guy or if you're a tweener guy and he's like, hey, show me the pictures on your phone and you mm-hmm. say no, you know, is he going to cut you? Is he going to reduce your minutes? Right. Is he going to reduce your role? Like there's a power, a power dynamic here that is not working out in yeah. favor of the player. And so, you know, I just uh, I think it's a really, really weird situation you know, we yeah. were talking about this off camera. Mm-hmm. Uh, Yarmo Kekalainen and John Davidson, they know like they know everything. They probably mm-hmm. they probably know more because they're in the room. You know, yeah. the track record that Mike Babcock has of playing and toying and mentally abusing his players is well is well known. You know, like. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, he wasn't playing Chris Chelios mm. in in you know in that game. And yeah, so Chelly had his his kids getting beers. You know, yep. so he's drinking beers during the game and hosing glizzies and stuff like. Yeah, and you know he you know he prevented Mike Madano from getting to fifteen hundred games. I didn't know that you know, one. Something that yeah, only like three or four 
players have ever done ever in the history of the game. Right. I think yeah. now it's a little bit more, but yeah, the fifteen hundred game plateau. Yeah. Wayne Gretzky didn't even get to fifteen hundred games. Yeah. You know? So it's like, uh, because he had eighty Madonna. two games. Yeah. To get him into forty one. Yeah. Just weird stuff, you know. You know he, like he had Mike yeah. Babcock had eighty two games to get him into forty one. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just the, these mm. games that he plays are very mm. strange and very. I just don't understand. And it was known, mm. which I think is is the the most egregious thing of them all. So, uh, you know, Rip Bozo, mm. Cox Scott, and Mike Babcock. He resigned. Um, yeah, you know, Vincent Pascal now is uh, he's taking mm-hmm. over. He's the head coach. Uh, Yarmo's job, John Davidson's job. They're both currently safe for the moment. Um, yeah. I kind of think it's because um, training camp starts on uh, tomorrow. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. Right now we're recording on Monday night, um, Tuesday morning, I guess, if you want to get it, whatever. If you want mm-hmm. to get it official, but um, you know, training camp starts on Wednesday, the twentieth of September, and mm-hmm. uh, you just lost your head coach. So um, yeah, good luck, and they're not going to make any more changes to that. So mm-hmm. very strange situation. I very think strange. Uh, you know, Yarmo, Yarmo's probably done <laughs> at the yeah. end of the season. Mm-hmm. And um, they're gonna owner, ownership is gonna go. Um, they're gonna they're gonna have a come to Jesus moment, as they say. Uh, mm-hmm. And they're they're gonna get their research done. And uh, bye bye Yarmo Kekalainen. <laughs> Yarmo, <laughs> right? And so, especially because he brought in all these, um, like the new decor, right? I think we we w- went over it like a few weeks ago, right? But um, right. they bring in this whole decor now and a few forwards here and there, right? Uh, not much at all in the um, forward space, but, you know, a few rookies, right? Or uh, just younger players. But if that doesn't work out, like if they really look like, like the team that they were last year. And then now that's pretty much guaranteed. They are completely out, you know, C- completely done. Right. Funny stuff, man. Funny stuff. Weird. Yeah. Unless, unless weird. this Pat, yeah. Unless Pascal Vincent has something uh, up his sleeve, you know? Uh huh. Right. I, I, I don't, I don't, I, I don't really know much about the guy, but, mm-hmm. um, you know, I, I think maybe if he has something, you know, maybe lead this team to something. But you know, I, mm-hmm. I just, you, you've got, um, oh, I might have lost you there. But, uh, you know, we, yeah. you lost me there too but now i'm back so when you have these elite talents um you know mike babcock is not the guy that's gonna get you there um plain and simple hey we're back skokes is back awesome yeah Yeah, i was just uh telling the listeners i was just talking you know when you have a guy Mm -hmm. like not mike babcock and then you you have players like johnny gaudreau right like patrick line Yep. And this is a little different, but like, you know, when you've got, um, you know, Elvis Merzlikens mm-hmm. and uh, Alexander Texier, you know, Alexander Texier, he took a little break. He went back yeah. to Europe. He checked into the player assistance program. Mm-hmm. Elvis Merzlikens has mm-hmm. gone through an incredibly traumatic experience in having his best friend save his life. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, it, it's a bit of a fragile team. Right. Or or even like Fan Fantilli, uh yeah. just fresh coming in this year and it's like what the heck? Right. Yeah. You know? Right. Exactly. And so when you have guys like this, 
Mike Babcock is not the guy that's going to push you over the edge. No. You know, Patrick Laine, you just need to let him get the puck, give him the puck, and launch a missile. <laughs> yeah, you know, right. The net, right. His shot, unbelievable. His goal scoring yeah. ability is unbelievable. Mm-hmm. You know, probably like second only to like Austin Matthews. And it's like right. when right. you get to when you get into Austin Matthews, a top three player in the league, mm-hmm. it's crazy. Yeah. You know, is is Mike Babcock gonna oh well you know what Patrick I'm gonna I'm gonna need you to uh, back check and I'm gonna need you to stay um you know, be be good a good two way player. No, that's not his game. Mm-hmm. Let him loose. You know, have him score the goals and pair him with as you you know when it's your job to get him to a, a good line mates that mm-hmm. might be able to you know that complement each other. So yeah, right, right. So, say Patrick Line, he's not the most defensive guy in the world. Okay, put a defensive mm-hmm. forward on his line, you win. Yeah. So, you know, and then you know, Alexander Texier, he's coming back from mm-hmm. the player assistance program and playing in Europe. Mm-hmm. You know, I think, I don't think he had anything to do with like substance abuse or whatnot. I think no. he, you know, I think he's just a young kid who was missing home. And yeah. so he went back home, he hung out uh, with his family, played some puck, mm-hmm. and now he's back. You know, I don't, I don't want a guy, I, I don't want Mike Babcock being like, well, Alex, you know, you did a you did a terrible job back checking there. Right. I'm gonna ruin your life. Right. Like like Mike Babcock ruined Cody Fron or not Cody Franzen. Uh, mm. Why am I blanking on his name? Johan oh, Franzen. Johan, right, right, right. So you know he tortured him, and it's like, you know, yeah. I, I don't want to I don't want to give that dude ammo. So yeah, Rip Bozo. Yeah, Babcock's gone. Yeah. Um. Columbus has a really uphill battle here, unfortunately. Yeah, definitely. Um, just when Yarmo loaded up and, you know, Provorov and um, Severson mm-hmm. and Good Branson, I think, is he's there, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, um, Good Branson. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And, uh, you know, so uh, just a really weird, really weird situation. Um mm-hmm. You know, I get that Spit and Chicklets is also like kind of an en- entertainment podcast more so than a newsy one. Right, right. Um, but, you know, this, uh, whatever you think of them, mm-hmm. you know, this is th- th- this is some legitimate pr- reporting they did. So I don't mm-hmm. think, um, you know, I don't think like hockey Twitter and like the hockey sphere needs to discount spitting chiclets that much mm-hmm. uh, i don't think they need to put them on a pedestal mm-hmm. uh, but you know i think there are some some media members who hold a lot of weight who have a lot of clout who were kind of uh just disregarding spitting chiclets because they're not very newsy mm-hmm. so i'd like to i'd like to see a little bit more uh rounding out of the media yeah. sphere in um in the hockey world right now, really, honestly, mm-hmm. I think I just, I think, uh, fans need to get a little bit more media literate. I think, um, and I mm-hmm. think, uh, the media outlets need to get a little bit more media literate. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, the NHL is, an, it, it's, it's a very interesting league that hasn't really kept up with the times per se, I would say. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and so, hockey culture and hockey attitude you know you've got like uh pascal dupuis playing with blood clots in his lungs and mm-hmm. you got patrice bergeron playing on a separated shoulder and uh yep and a collapsed lung you know hockey guys are tough you know and yeah. we know that everyone knows that mm-hmm. um but you know sometimes you gotta you know you gotta look in the mirror and be like you know what this is a problem you know whatever it is if mm-hmm. it's a if it's a coach mistreating the players in Mike Babcock's situation or a Bill Peters situation or whatever, you know, mm-hmm. um, you know, uh, like Ron, like Ron Hainsey, he played for Mike Babcock and now mm-hmm. he is exact. I think he's the vice president of the NHL players association. Yeah. I, I just saw his name pop up like 
the last few days. Um, not sure what happened, but I did see his name. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, exactly. Yeah. So he you know, he was involved in the investigation with the NHL Players Association right. because the NHL Players Association caught wind of the Babcock situation mm-hmm. and went down and did an investigation. So yep. you know, Marty Walsh is taking this stuff seriously. Mm-hmm. And Ron Hainsey is taking this stuff seriously. You know, when there, there have been other – um, coach misconduct type business. Ron Hainsey was part of that leadership group mm-hmm. that would, would go to the coach and say, Hey man, you know, we're, something's going on here. Mm-hmm. And like, it was, I believe, um, like, you know, it was like Chelios and mm-hmm. some other guys, they went to, uh, Ken Holland about the, uh, Johan Franzen situation and, mm-hmm. and whatnot and said, you know, Hey, uh, you know, Babcock's doing all this stuff right now, and it's not really, you know, and we're not digging it. And so it's, mm. you're seeing those players that have uh, the rapport with the other players in those right. leadership roles, and they're, they're doing it, they're, they're making use of them. Mm-hmm. And so I, I, th- I think that's a really good, I think it's a really good step that the NHL is taking culturally to mm-hmm. kind of get that in. So if, you know, if it's, if you see something, say something type business, and I think it's working out now. So yeah, hopefully, um, hopefully. Yeah. yeah. It, it's, it's at least trending in that direction, which is, a, right, which, right. is a, which is positive. Yep. Uh, so uh, glad that that situation has been taken care of. Uh, there will be more followed. Uh, you know, yeah. Yeah. Definitely more, there. more details on it. Yeah, uh, for sure. And in mm-hmm. the coming days. And um, yeah, so uh, Blackhawks news, Tom mm-hmm. Curver's uh, showcase, in addition to Riot Fest, was this past weekend. Mm-hmm. And uh, Skokes, you watched uh, the first game. Yeah. Uh, Connor Bedard. Mm-hmm. Right. Hat trick. Uh, hat trick. Oh, man. You love uh, to see it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I, I tuned into both games on a. Uh, yeah, so Saturday and Sunday, right? Oh, right. very rad. Yeah, so I covered the first game on the um, last video, but if you missed it, go hop online, check out those highlights. Definitely. Uh, that shot is unbelievable, and I went over it before, but, man, I watched back the second and third period, I think, of that first game. Um yeah. Because it's on, un- it's unreal. Like I, I just had to go back and watch, you know, every shift uh, from Connor, and the kid is five steps ahead every shift. Man, uh, he knows where the puck's going, and he's there. He's ready for it in transition mm. in the neutral zone. He's flying down the uh, mainly the left side, so he's playing opposite. Uh, stick side right okay but but it's amazing to watch you know flying down the left side hits the brakes uh sends it across or he takes a shot on net and uh the first game he had 11 shots on net um wow not not sure on the time on ice obviously because they weren't tracking you know uh scrimmage but Just looking at like the first period, he might have had four or five shots just in that first period, and he just rounded out uh, second and third. But and he also tallied one assist. Um, I can't remember who it was to, but the the shots are unreal. Um, The first shot was just far side. I. uh, went over it before but far side snipe uh second shot was the best shot i've seen in a long long time you know and like i was telling uh like my family here too like you don't see patrick kane taking these shots you know like even back in the day picking his corner like that from right. i mean pretty much his butt is on the boards right like the left boards he's he's looking at the goal picks a top corner right corner just puts it in there it's unbelievable i mean 
Yeah. And he and he was finished his, it out. Yeah, was his um was his third goal the rock star almost borderline rock star zone? Like all, like below the hash marks? Yeah. Um, or was that the second goal? Um I think that was the second one. That was one okay. where where he picked it off. But um right. the third goal for the hat trick, which I didn't think he was gonna get a hat trick, right? But Nick Lard is flying down the uh, right side, so he's a lefty, obviously. But for uh, one timers, that's an advantage uh, for them. So he's yeah. flying down the uh, right side, uh, hits the brakes, sends it over to the left um, circle. But Bedard's cutting in towards the uh, slot there. Perfect pass on the tape. Uh, Nick Lard has played very well both games. Very, very Im- impressed uh, offensively by him, you know. But sends it to Bedard, and he sends it far side, sort of like on ice shot, you know, just just oh, let right. it float. Yeah. Uh, goalie barely moved. He did not know what happened. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> barely moved. The puck is in a net. It goes ping. I mean, unreal. Yeah. Couldn't even yeah. see the puck, honestly. One of my favorite sounds in sports. Right. It's unreal. Um, but going to the Sunday scrimmage, so yeah. Bedard didn't dress. Uh, Kaiser didn't dress. Right. And I went over Kaiser for the first game, but he looked spectacular. You know, uh, he was going coast to coast, uh, mm-hmm. le- leading the rush, you know. Hmm. And not just like turning it over, you know, get, uh, gets to the red line, just turns it over. But no, like he was carrying that puck, yeah. like similar to um, how Vlasic was carrying it uh, last year, like, yeah. but like sort of taking that role, right? Okay. I mean, Kaiser looked spectacular uh, first game, but di- wow. but didn't dress hmm. that uh, second scrimmage. Uh, yeah. Very impressive, man. But uh, second scrimmage on Sunday against the uh, Wild prospects. Um, Wild won seven to four. Uh, we we got out in front like three to one early lead. I think it was the uh, first period still. Mm. Um, obviously, the uh, score doesn't matter, but Mitch Weeks was in net. Uh, not impressed. Uh, let in a few softies, a few um, – a few bouncers, right? Just un- unlucky goals, but we've seen from him uh, just in like recent memory here. Uh, j- just hasn't been very tight in that, you know. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, not great, not great. But that's all right, you know. Uh, we have a lot of a lot of guys in the system, and I'm and I'm not very worried about uh, the uh, net, yeah. you know. Right, yeah, Camesso, Guyon. Right, yeah, and and I highlighted Camesso on the uh, first reaction. Uh, he was stout, stout as heck. You know, just uh, did did not panic. Played like how he should. You know, like he he carried that BU team for that second half of their uh, uh, season there. That the first game was five zero, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah, yep. So he pitched a shutty. Yeah. Whoa. Yep. Yeah, dude, Camesso. Hey, yeah. mm-hmm. I know it's a rookie showcase, yeah. but I mean, when you got your number one prospect in Connor Bedard going, you know, three and one, three one yeah. plus four, mm-hmm. and then you got Camesso, your your next up starting goaltender, right? Getting a shut a shutty. Mm-hmm. Man, I mean, and, you know, once again, that's prospects, but yeah. it's that's really really. Yeah, that's all. That's that's awesome. I, you just love to see it. Yeah, and that's what we wanted to see. You know, uh, just um, you sh- you should be performing very well. And I mean, he was awesome. You know, uh, d- didn't see a ton of shots, hmm. obviously, because um, yeah. we own puck possession. Uh, we don't know the numbers, but my God, we had the puck all night, all yeah. night. You know, um, Kaiser's going coast to coast to coast. Right, right. You know I, that your D man has the the puck and he's going yeah. from your defensive end to your offensive end. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know that's uh, 
That's mm -hmm. a, it's a, a good indication that uh, you have the puck a lot. Yeah, definitely. Uh, really quick on the goal scorers uh, for that second scrimmage there. Yeah. Uh, Nick Lardis, um, he tallied one goal. Nice. Um, sort of just flew in, flew in on like a two-on-one with someone. Uh, ripped it far side, uh, snipe, nice goal. Uh, Ryder Rolston had the uh, second goal. Uh, he was circling around more towards like the top of the circle. Oh. Uh, the uh, right circle. And I think there was some traffic in front of the net. And it just found its way nice. way in there. Uh, Speaking missile. Love it. Yeah. Nice shot. Ryder Rosen. Love to see it. Super fast player. Uh, loved how he played. Very impressive. I was, I was going to say, I, I heard a lot. Um, mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I, I follow all Blackhawks media on uh, Twitter. So right. I was hearing when they were like, oh, Lardis, you know, he's, he's looking amazing. And, mm -hmm. you know, everyone was like, dude. Wyatt Kaiser, he's looking great yeah. wearing the C. Mm -hmm. um, and then they were saying Ryder Rolston. Yeah. You know, and he's, he, I think he's primarily going to be in Rockford this year. Yeah. I would imagine. Yeah. Yeah. But they, um, Anders Sorensen was saying that he, I, I think he was lo really looking forward to having a, a player like Ryder Rolston mm -hmm. on the team. And just getting everyone going because his motor is just go, 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 go. So mm -hmm. he right. brings, he drags everyone in with that same type of mentality. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, he's he's definitely like a, a hounding player. Like, like, should I say like a Brandon Hagel with, with, with less of an offensive game, right? Okay. Like he's just super hounding, super fast. Uh, hey, if you could be a speedy player and just get get some greasy goals, I mean, uh, not much more that you know uh, we we could ask for. So it worked out for Victor Stahlberg, right? Right, right. Yeah, and you know he contributed at at times. You know, exactly. And that's what you need from uh, players like that. Um, also, the uh, third goal uh, from from Colton Doc. Uh, this one got me out of my seat, man. Uh, Col Colton Doc uh, put the puck in in front of the net, uh, sort of like a short one t, like stuck in traffic, right? But Nolan Allen carries it in from the right point, you know, because he's playing opposite with a uh, Corch. Okay, yeah. And Nolan Allen's like, I have some speed. I'm going to dance it in uh, towards the uh, hash marks, right? And he just fiddles with it a bit, you know, slowly creeping in, dishes it off to um, center slot, and Colton Doc buries it. I mean, man, Nolan Allen, uh, when he has some space, he he makes some And we like you know, uh, as a defensive uh, defenseman, if he has a little offensive spark like that, man, that's great to see. Similar to, to like a Seabrook, you know, like where he activates at some points. Um, right. It's it's great to see. Great to see. Yeah. And speaking of Nolan Allen, you mm -hmm. know, he goes in there, delivers a hip check. Yes, yes. And uh, mm -hmm. Minnesota Wild teammate didn't like it, mm -hmm. drops the mitts with him. Yeah. And proceeds to get the brake speed off him. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, there's always standing up for your fellas, for the boys, you know. Mm -hmm. um, that one was not one uh, that he, he, that's one he would want, want back. Uh, yeah. Nolan Allen destroyed him. So, yeah. Uh, uh, Nolan Allen versus Ryan O'Rourke. And uh, we, we have it up on the uh, account here. Uh, just, just don't mess with, with Big Al. Uh, yeah. Korchinski said that uh, they uh, call him Big Al in uh, Seattle. So uh, I I would not mess with that guy. Uh, he gave him the uh, business, man. That sure. that's good stuff from from Allen. Yeah, and I, I love to see. Uh, I like to see Colton Doc. Colton Doc. Yeah. Uh, you know, 
adding to the offense and yep. everything because mm. I, I just on one of Connor Bedard's goals he was just standing that front yeah and and Bedard rips it and he's just standing there yeah. like hands on he, his head like he, he couldn't, couldn't believe it yeah he couldn't yeah. believe it you know, right it was he was like wow we just scored like that was amazing but like how <laughs> yeah so, um yeah it's awesome yeah uh just a few standouts like um Martin Misiak also also scored on Sunday. Uh, it was oh, a nice. it was a deflection uh, net front um, from Corch. He took a uh, a, a one timer from from the point. Nice shot, solid shot, heavy shot. Uh, and uh, Misiak just you know got a, a nice tip on it, and and that bounces in. That's great to see. Misiak was. Uh, maybe my other top per- performer from the weekend. Um, nice. He played very well on like that second line. And then when Bedard sat out on Sunday, uh, Misiak took that first line with uh, Lardis, uh, Misiak down the middle, and Doc on the right side. And uh, they were buzzing. Uh, all, all three of those guys were, were definitely buzzing uh, both days. Good stuff. Um, a few guys that maybe didn't play as well as I uh, would, you know, l- like to see from, you know, a couple scrimmages here. Yeah. Uh, Ethan Del Mastro was pretty stout in the uh, D zone, you know, okay. responsible in the O zone. Didn't didn't pinch too much. Didn't get crazy. Mm. Um, but his skating and speed. And I know that's something that we have pointed out before, right, right. with Del Mastro. But he did get beat a couple times going back in transition, you know, uh, chasing. And I think he did catch one or two penalties just trying to get back and, you know, uh, holding holding the uh, guy getting down there. But if he could improve the skating, work on the speed, you know, j- just get – a little lighter on your feet because he seemed a little uh just like flat footed, you know. Yeah. Uh when he's handling the uh, puck. Bigger guy. Yeah. So, you know, maybe maybe it's just a kind of a thing where it's like he grew a little too fast, you know. Yeah. I yeah. definitely knew a couple of kids like that in high school. Mm-hmm. Um just a little lanky and weird. So maybe, you know, maybe he could smooth that out. Mm-hmm. Um he's gonna be you think he's going to be on the Ice Hogs this this coming season? I I think he is starting there uh, this okay. season. Yeah, they're probably going to have to shelter his minutes, maybe put him on the third pairing. Yeah, and yeah. then just work on that positioning, right? Or whatever you know, maybe or maybe his mind is also going a little bit faster than his feet. Right, so, right. You know, just you know, it, it could be a myriad of things, but um, mm-hmm. um, you know, it. it Maybe it's also just nerves, you know, mm-hmm. prospect showcase and whatever. So, uh, yeah, but um, yeah, I mean, a little, uh, you know, that is a little disappointing because, yeah. you know, I, I, I feel like he's been his stock has been rising. And, right, uh, right. 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 To, you know, to have this little bit of a setback is, you yeah, know, it, it is a little disappointing. But mm-hmm. yeah, you know, um, mm-hmm. still good to see that he's. Yeah, uh, you know, in there and mm-hmm. uh, in the plays. Yeah, um, and just one more, uh, not disappointing, but I, I I thought could have played a little uh, better uh, is Gavin Hayes. Um, I I believe he was a yeah. third rounder, yeah. and um, obviously uh, b- blowout season from um, last year. Uh, Potting in like forty goals in the uh, for the Flint Firebirds, uh, right? Flint, OHL Flint Firebirds, right, right. Yeah, yeah it was, he had a he had a resurgence, not a resurgence mm-hmm. because I think you got to fall off before you have it, but right, he had a surge. In, oh yeah, yeah, in offensive mm-hmm. output for sure. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So he had a couple opportunities, like net front. Uh, Samuel Savoie comes speeding in like three or four times. Uh, swings around the net, throws it in front. Uh, Gavin Hayes gets a few shots on net. You know, so so they did have a little c- 
connection. Um, uh, Hayes also taking a few wrist shots on the uh, first power play. Um, he has some opportunities playing the um, opposite side um, <laughs> mo- most of the time, uh, taking shots on net. But I thought he could have been a little more in involved, you know, um, without the puck. Uh, because I was really focusing in on him, you know, because he did have such a big year, you know, yeah. and I thought he would be a little more, a uh, li- li- little more motor, right? You know, uh, so if he could work on his motor a bit, then man, we have a a very interesting player, you know, with uh, Gavin Hayes, definitely. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that, it's good that. Um... You know, I don't know, maybe, you know, I, there's a lot of people who put it like disclaimers, like, oh, hey, you know, it's a prospect showcase, yeah, but, yeah. you know, and everything. Mm-hmm. So, you know, may, maybe that just went to Gavin Hayes' head. Um, right, right. Mm-hmm. And he was like, oh, well, this doesn't matter. So mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm not going to put forth effort. But um, he's probably going to go back to the OHL, you think? Or, you th- or maybe, yeah. I think so, yeah. I haven't heard anything with him uh, moving up yet. Right. Uh, yeah. So I imagine that he's uh, going back to the O. Yeah. Yeah. Young kid. He'll go. Yeah. He'll go get some more reps. Right. And, right. Um, just you know, continue developing and um, de- developing these guys, and we'll then we'll see him in Ice Hogs uniforms, and then we'll see him uh, in, yeah. in a Hawks uniform. And, yeah. Uh, definitely. It's really awesome. So mm-hmm. this mm-hmm. has gone on really mm-hmm. long. And uh, yeah. I appreciate mm-hmm. uh, the listeners staying with us and yeah. uh, the watchers oh, watching. Right. Uh, yeah. Really, really quick with uh, yeah. just tying into um, uh, training camp here uh, starting this week. Yeah. Uh, so the physicals, you know, uh, some of the – stuff with that starts on Wednesday. So there is no practice on Wednesday, but uh, training camp does start off on Thursday, uh, the uh, 21st here. Cool. Yeah. And if you're, and if you're looking for tickets to, uh, you know, head down to the uh, fifth third to uh, check out Bedard and the boys, right. Uh, Just head on over to the uh, Hawks website. And then they have a, uh, a, a tab open for it and you do have to claim the tickets on like a ticket master type of thing yeah. uh, similar to the bears uh, training camp oh, okay. um, yeah because obviously you know there's going to be a lot of eyes trying to get in there and uh, check out the uh, team this year definitely so definitely uh, yeah, yeah Ho- thanks for that tidbit mm-hmm. yep uh, hopefully it's not sold out yet but uh, you know, because it does fill up pretty quick. Uh, yeah, but head on over, check it out. Yeah, pick up some, some tickets. Yeah, mm-hmm. so training camp starting Thursday the 21st. Mm-hmm. All right. Got to get those tickets if you want to see Bedard. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, thanks for joining us here on this edition of the Chicago Central Black Hawks Hockey Podcast. And uh, I've been Joe Vitale. That is Skokes. Have a good rest of the week. Hockey's right around the corner. Mm -hmm. Go Hawks. Let's go Hawks.